Hi everyone, this is Scott McLeod. I'm talking with schools all around the world about their responses to our global coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I have with me today my very good friend, Jeff Herzberg, my former employer, um, who is the Chief Administrator of Prairie Lakes Area Education Agency in Northwest Iowa. Jeff, the agency serves about how many districts now? Uh, 39 public school districts and about 11 non-public schools, about 32,000 students total. Okay, and that's a very large geographic area, roughly the size of New Jersey. Um, and Jeff has a tremendous staff who are trying to meet the needs of primarily rural districts in Iowa every day. Uh, so Jeff, thanks for being with us today, and it's nice to see you again. Um, why don't you share a little bit about sort of Prairie Lakes uh, AEA's early responses uh, during these, you know, these first couple weeks here? Sure. You know, like uh, many people, our first and foremost uh, priority was making sure our own people are okay. Uh, so every connection we've tried to make with them, we're trying to say, you know, take care of yourself first, uh, take care of your family so that you'll have the energy and wherewithal to support uh, folks when we figure out exactly what that's going to look like. Um, so that's been, uh, you know, one of our well-being mantras here at Prairie Lakes AEA is making sure everybody's okay and healthy. Um, and then we're really trying to have them, you know, be in control of what they can control as far as serving at schools. Um, as you know, Scott, 80% uh, of our work is in the area of special education. So there's been um, some guidance from the federal and state government, and we're still waiting on some other about how do we serve. Uh, students during this time uh, to make sure that everything is accessible, equitable, um, and that we're able to again meet the needs. So we're, you know, we're really trying to adjust to what we can control. And those things have really right now been around, you know, if you can have an IEP meeting over the phone, if you can collect some data, if you can work on some Medicaid paperwork, do it. And if there's something you can't do and a timeline's going to be missed, you know, we're not worried about that right now. Um, our folks who help, you know, develop professional learning opportunities. Again, we're trying to do the same thing. What can we control? Well, we can control, we have some time now that internal staff can do some learning that maybe we've been wanting to do all year long and just never have the extra time. And maybe now we've got a little or will have as this continues. Um, and then those learning opportunities for districts. So we did a district survey. You know, 21 of our districts got back to us and create a whole list of things. And so now we've got people working on those things. Uh, a lot in the area of trauma, ACEs, uh, social emotional learning. Uh, tried to do youth mental health first aid, but that's we can't do that online. That's not allowed. So we're just trying to adapt to that. Um, and then provide some content area, um, specialists, literacy, math, social studies. So yeah, that's been our response so far. Got it. So you have this sort of different flavor because you're an educational service agency, right? You're not, you know, a direct provider. Um, so how does that flavor how you as a leader think about what you're trying to make happen for the families and schools in your communities? Well, I think it, as normal, it comes down to um, what is our role in the whole learning process. And we're much more of a support role uh, for district staff, uh, teachers, paraeducators, administrators, um, support role for families and the early childhood uh, environments that we have, but we're not making any home visits right now. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, we do have some direct service people, you know, providers, obviously, uh, speech language pathologists, occupational physical therapists, um, teachers of the hearing impaired. So we're really trying to get our head around what's possible with that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, how might we use teletherapy to get into some of those homes um, and provide some support, guidance, oversight to and encourage parents, other caregivers, you know, to work with their children. So, yeah, absolutely. So, Jeff, what seems to be working right now? Well, I think uh, one of the things I know is working is the our that first thing I talked about our priority about making sure people are taking care of themselves and each other. Um, we've our wellness ambassadors. We've got a couple of people in each office that uh, started their first wellness um, zoom up yesterday. And so weekly they're going to hold a office meeting via zoom and really just, it's just about wellness. So mental, mental, physical, spiritual, 
you know, how are you taking care of yourselves? What do you need? And I, yesterday I wasn't able to jump in because I've been in a bunch of other Zooms at statewide level. Um, but I guess it was fantastic. People were sharing some of that anxiety and that need for connecting or how do I do this when I've got, you know, my five and eight year old are home with me now. Um, and so it's, it's really trying to find that balance of what can I do um, reasonably well and still take care of myself and my family. So I know that our, again, that's working. Uh, I would say that's working as our schools are reaching out to us, again, to find some of those things that we can help support them on. Hey, we've got time now. We're still paying our hourly employees. We're still paying our teachers. Um, and and we, so we're gonna try to create, again, some learning um, things that, and, and already are doing some things that, again, they wouldn't have had time to do outside on their normal work schedule. Absolutely. What seem to be some of the sticking points or challenges at this moment? I think a big one is just is really the equity equity issue. Um, you know, uh, especially with special education students, our students from poverty, um, do they have the same access to online learning? You know, for example, uh, that other kids have. Um, you know, if if some kids are home by themselves and don't have a parent, they're able to help navigate some of those things. Um, how are they doing that? So I think that's been a huge challenge so far is um, is the equity access issue. Um, the other thing I would say is just uh, because it's all new, um, we're trying to figure it out. Um, and so as a challenge of, you know, the one more thing you got to think about that you, you sort of take for granted in the in-person environment, it's just been, you know, uh, putting a load on all the leaders, and I really respect everybody that's in a leadership position at this point, uh, because they're, they're, the weight is heavy, um, and they're trying to make sense of it all and provide some good guidance and direction, all the while showing that we've got it together. Um, right. and so we're trying to, you know, give some optimism for folks and let them know. But um, as I usually do, Scott, uh, I'm sharing that I'm tired, uh, you know, I'm just exhausted from the amount of online meetings I've had. So when I've had been able to take a break, um, I'm, you know, my dog is getting tired because I'm taking him for a walk around the block. <laughs> and that's been helpful for my, my own self. So. Yeah. So Jeff, as you and I know, right before this recording, uh, you invited me to sit in on a Zoom meeting with your superintendents, whoever just wanted to come join and talk. And, you know, I think the sense that I got from them and from the other leaders that I'm interacting with is that everybody's really, really tired right now. They're, you know, uh, trying so hard to meet the needs of their kids and their families and their communities, and they're putting in just tremendous hours. And there's so much stress around this and so much um, anxiety and lack of clarity and uncertainty. And, um, you know, I just think you know, circling back to around to that theme that you said around wellness, right, is that we have to take care of ourselves as leaders, and we have to figure out ways to take care of our people. So, and, and that's a very tangible, uh, weedy thing that we can't ignore. Yeah, yeah no, I, I had commented on somebody's tweet the other day that uh, somebody had met, that I follow had mentioned, you know, in times like this, we find out who the really dedicated people are. And I actually said, you know, I'm not sure about that. I think we're finding out who have the best support systems in place, um, who have the best self-care strategies in place, because I'm not gonna question somebody's, what I would perceive as a lack of dedication because they're not out leading or out front because they're not dedicated. I'm gonna, it's just like students, right? We, if we don't know the whole story, it's awfully hard for us to sit in judgment or again, know how any of this stuff is gonna affect us. And, um, I'm just, again, thankful for my peers and who are helping me through this time. And uh, I know folks like you who reach out and uh, make sure we're okay. And even just talking about it like this is super healthy. So thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that was well said. Anything else you want to share about what's happening in Northwest Iowa right now around learning and coronavirus and, you know, taking care of our communities? Well, I, I'm hopeful that you know, this sort of stoppage in action or detour, speed bump, whatever we're gonna call it, um, is really helping us think about the future of education. Um, there's you know, a lot of dumb rules that have come up and seem like barriers and, and people are thinking, why is that rule in place? Well, 
if we didn't have this attacking us right now, we might not be thinking about that, just still complying with that rule. Uh, we might not have thought about online learning as we are thinking about it now. And what are the benefits? What are the challenges? So again, I'm hopeful that we'll use this as a time of reflection to say, you know, let, again, let's not continue status quo when we come back. Let's get better uh, and learn something from this experience instead of, again, business as usual when we get back together. So yeah, absolutely. That's a absolutely. great hope. Yeah, me too. Same thing. <laughs> All right, so we're up on our 10 minutes here, so we're gonna wave goodbye. Uh, Jeff, very appreciative of your time today and for the invite to hang out with your superintendents before this. Uh, we'll see everybody on the next episode. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.